th this is a single option. If you, I'm not sure if any of you knew that that uh, this was possible, but Thinkorswim does allow you to chart individual options um, on on anything on stocks, ETFs, futures, uh, any anything anything that trades could be charted. So this is that put. The reason why I'm, I started charting it and looking into it was because on a particular day, this was, this was on January 10th, uh, there was 30,000 of these shares, excuse me, of these options that traded. On, on an average day, TLT trades approximately 100,000 options, uh, both a mix of calls and puts. Um, so for for this day to uh, to have approximately 30% of the volume that TLT does in options on a single day, 30% of it just go to this single strike that's out one year uh, into the future, 2021. Uh, that that's what caught my attention. So it's is this somebody trying to express an opinion that in the long term um, yields will, will will rise, in particular long end yields, back end yields? You know, the the, the ten year, the the thirty year, or anything in between. Is that is that what this is trying to express, or is it trying to express something else? That's that's what we have to figure out. So in the process of doing so, uh, one thing that, that immediately stuck out to me is that a year prior, this is uh, going back to November of 2018, a little bit more than a year prior, this contract was worth $12.45. And since then, it's been losing value. Mind you, this is a, a a contract that back here had probably you know 600 or 700 days to to go to expiration. So I I, I don't think that this was theta coming off of it, uh, at least this sharply. Currently, it continues to make lower lows, 68 cents. But but what was most interesting is. To me, at least, is I decided to compare it against um, the ZB future, which is what I uh, one of the futures that I per, uh, particularly like to trade. This is a trick I learned from Jonathan. Uh, he he taught me that if I put a minus sign in front of a symbol, uh, think or swim would know to chart the inverse of it rather than the symbol itself. So. Using that little trick I, I learned from Jonathan, just, I just just to throw in, that's one of many little programming tips I've given him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's given me a lot. All right. Cool. <laughs> so as this loads up, I I immediately saw, okay, this ZB is the inverse of ZB is tracking this put. Okay, that makes sense. This pink line that appeared is moving lower, which means ZB is going up since it's an inverse. Um, so during this whole time, ZB was rallying. The back end yields were, were getting smushed. They were going down. Um, and as you would expect, a put option on something that is going up is going to lose value. Okay, Th then sometime around, right around September, right before September started, August, we see that the pink line starts to rally, which really means ZB starts to sell off a little bit. Um, and this line didn't really react much or as much, and then they kind of get disconnected. So one way to measure that is using a correlation. In Thinkorswim, you can uh, plot the correlation of 
two assets um, or two, you know, the SPX versus, um, I don't know, even the NASDAQ futures or, or anything, any two products that you would like to uh, see what the correlation is between them. By default, Thinkorswim uh, uses a 10, um, meaning it uses the past 10 days and it, it is, assesses whether the two, the two things that you're plotting or the two things that you're comparing are moving in the same direction or moving in opposite directions of each other. So I changed this to a 30 just to, just to make it a, a month, right? I, I want to see how well or how poor are these two assets correlating on a 30-day basis. And what I found was uh, was kind of mind blowing. I was not expecting that at all. It it really you know uh, shocked me. Uh, and I annotated this. Okay. So as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, one would expect these two assets to correlate with each other, right? We have a put, and we have the inverse of something. So if that inverse of, of uh, ZB is going down, um, that means it, it's rallying, then I would expect puts on it to, to lose money, right? So the correlation coefficient in this case was almost one, it was almost perfect, 94. I think the lowest that got uh, somewhere over here was about 68 which is still, uh, it's still pretty good, higher than anything, higher than, uh, than, than 0.5. Um, to me, it starts to get correlated, but notice how much more time it spent up here until something happened at a very specific date. And from that date onward, the two completely lost correlation. Uh, and I, I'm trying to, to, to explain to myself or trying to find why, what is going on here? And then my second question is, could this giant trade have anything to do with this? Right, are firms or uh, hedge funds or you know whatever, or somebody with, with, with a whole bunch of capital, are they also seeing this? And, and putting on some size. So that's the other thing that I'm thinking about. Hey, Pablo. Yep. First of all, this is really impressive analysis. This is the exact kind of analysis that I would get when I worked at a family office, uh, when I did that consulting for a year about closed end funds. People okay. would come in all the time and pitch different trades. This is that kind of trade. So this first is really impressive. Um, Thank you. Yeah, for for sure. I mean, does what do you, what do you guys think? Everyone out there, does does it make sense? Help us know, guys, if it makes sense because we can see who's on and just just to, you guys to come back and. You know, if, if we're just if we're just talking, and, or maybe you're just watching the recording later, which which is fine, but it's got to make sense for you, and that's the whole thing. Where Pablo and I have talked about just kind of delivering information, and I have said to him, well, just slow it down a little bit. Um, let's make things as clear as possible, and, and everybody can see from just the charts how much more clear it is. Um, but he can go quicker, he can go slower. This is part of a feeling it out. So for your benefit, for, for his benefit as well, Pablo, right? I, I think you would you would love any kind of feedback that we can get. I just want you guys to understand this right here is a legitimate hedge fund level trade backed by lots of reason. And with how creative it is and how he's looking at it makes the barrier for entry that much greater. And if you can find an idea where the barrier for entry is very high, you should be more confident about that idea. 